Howdy class and welcome to today's lecture. Uh, we're going to go over anti-bullying uh, and how it relates to, to the services within the recreation field. Uh, some of the things that we want to cover today is defining what bullying is, who is affected by bullying, uh, characteristics and signs of people who are bullied as well as those who bully others some ideas about how to protect against as well as recover from bullying. And then finally, we'll talk about a little staff training and how you're gonna prepare your staff in your camps uh, to observe, to recognize, to prevent, and to assess uh, when bullying may occur. All right, so let's get started. So what is bullying? Bullying is a form of unprovoked aggressive behavior that involves a real or perceived power imbalance, okay? So those that it affects, um, who does the bullying affect? It can affect the ones who bully, the ones who are bullied, and the ones who observe in that behavior. And because of this, many of, uh, not many of, but any of those who are involved in the bullying, even from a, of a outside perspective, increase their risk of negative outcomes. So while bullying is not an epidemic, epidemic, the rates are not decreasing either. So traditional forms of bullying still remain and are prevalent, but you also have uh, in the past, you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years, we have the concept of cyberbullying that's coming, uh, that's increasing as well. Bullying alone does not cause suicide, but it can contribute. All youth involved in the bullying episode are affected. Like I said, the victim, the bully, and the bystanders. And criminalization will not stop bullying. So punitive programs, uh, like three strikes and you're out, or something like that, they don't work in really addressing the bullying issues. So let's look at children likely to be bullied. While there's no single factor that puts a child at risk of being bullied, it can happen to anyone, anywhere. So cities, suburbs, rural settings, any of those uh, settings can happen. But there are some common risk factors surrounding children who are bullied. Often uh, you'll see that it's uh, children who are perceived different than their peers. They may be overweight or underweight, wearing glasses, different clothing, being new, new to a school, being able to afford what others have. They may be perceived as weak and not able to defend themselves. They may be anxious or depressed or have so low self-esteem. Be less popular than those and have few friends. They may not get along with others generally or be seen as annoying or provoking. As well as there are uh, such environmental uh, issues like youth who uh, identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender youth, youth with disabilities and socially isolated youth, they may be even at a greater increased risk. And you'll see that uh, these, these are also hyperlinked. So if you're interested, you can follow that link to specific information related to those groups uh, and how uh, some of that might be beneficial to your projects going forward. Just wanna throw that out there. So here are some of the common factors that are generally present in children who bully others. So children who bully others may have more or one of these characteristics, but it's really important to notice that the power imbalance is the defining factor. So it doesn't matter where they come from, uh, it doesn't matter where they are, there's generally some kind of power imbalance that they, they have over someone else, and that's what they're looking to exploit. So you can read through some of the characteristics here um, as we go on to. So here's some of the warning signs and effects. Kids who are bullied, they experience negative physical, school, and mental health issues. So they're, like I said, we've, uh, they're more likely to be depressed and have anxiety. There's accompanied health complaints. Your academic achievement can be decreased. Uh, it's hard to concentrate in school and do well in school when you're feeling anxious or depressed about being bullied. And while a very small number of bullied children might retaliate through extreme violent measures, 
it's important to know that 12 out of 12 of 15 school shooting cases in the 90s in the 1990s the shooter had a history of being bullied so there's definitely some outcomes that are beyond just the the initial physical or mental they can have long-lasting effects and result in some very traumatic experiences uh, for others as well as themselves so kids who bully uh, others often engage in violent and risky behaviors into adulthood so they tend to abuse alcohol and other drugs they get into fights uh, they engage in early sexual activity they have criminal convictions and traffic citations they may be abusive towards their romantic partners or spouses because they were and children as well um, and if you've ever seen or heard of caught about cascading effects this is an example how things that happen to you while young may have long-term effects and we call it cascading effects because it's like a cascade and they just pile on top of each other uh, and they have dramatic results due to that all right so here's some warning signs and effects of children who are being bullied uh, you may want to look for unexplainable injuries, uh, lost or destroyed clothing, books, electronics, uh, change in eating habits, uh, especially anxiety and depression will have a, an effect on their eating habits. They may stop skipping, they may start skipping meals or they may go into binge eating. Um, kids may come home from school hungry because they didn't eat lunch. Maybe there was a, an issue there and uh, they chose not to eat lunch. Oftentimes, difficulty sleeping and frequent nightmares accompany bullying sessions. Uh, we talked about the academic declines, loss of sudden friends or avoidance of social situations. Uh, many times, youth are not sure where they're, they feel safe, so they pull away from many of their normal activities. And that's accompanied sort of by a feeling of helplessness and then a decreased self-esteem. So these are things you want to look at. And uh, I have another hyperlink here, and it is from StopBullying.gov. So if you know someone in serious distress or danger, don't ignore the problem and get help right away. So you may go to the link that's provided here at the bottom for more information. And here are some of the signs of a child who is bullying others. They get into physical verbal fights. They have friends who are bullies. They start uh, showing increasingly aggressive behavior. They get in trouble and um, they go to the principal's office. Maybe they have unexplained extra money or new belongings if they're bullying that from someone and taking it from them. They oftentimes blame others for their problems. They don't accept a responsibility for their own actions. And um, it's competitive and they worry about their reputation or popularity a lot. So there is this, they have concepts that how others view them in an important way we discussed uh we talked about this uh at least lee in the name said it about cyberbullying and yes i know you probably have grown up in the time which cyberbullying has been present you've probably heard about it many a times um during my my youth time this wasn't something until the very end that became an issue but cyberbullying does take place, which is just bullying in an electronic environment. Uh, it's similar uh, examples include, I mean, text messages, emails, uh, things sent, uh, posted on social media. Uh, people feel more bold oftentimes to be able to say that because of there's some level of anonymity uh, oftentimes. Um, but here's some of the things that uh, why cyberbullying is different. Kids who are being cyberbullied are often bullied in person as well, so they're getting hit twice, so to speak. Uh, additionally, kids who are cyberbullied have a harder time getting away from the behavior because we're, we're quite often connected to the electronic environment. It can happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you can't really get away from it. The cyberbullying and messages and images can be posted anonymously and distributed quickly to a quite a wide audience and deleting inappropriate or harassing text message or pictures is extremely difficult once they've been posted 
So some of the effects that go along with cyberbullying, uh, social media sites can be used for positive activities, obviously, uh, like connecting kids and friends and families and such, but they also have quite a uh, potential for negative activity. So cell phones and computers turn themselves, um, excuse me, cell phones and computers themselves, they're not to blame, but how you use those tools is what's important and how people use those tools to hurt others. Um, Kids who cyberbully show very similar um, reactions as those who are bullied face to face. Uh, propensity to use alcohol or drugs, skip school, experience in person bullying, become unwilling to attend school, their academic grades suffer, their lowers they ha their self esteem begins to drop, and they can have compounding health problems as a result. So in this case, what works when we talk about uh, bullying? Well, there are effective measures that address bullying and it requires multiple levels of commitment and active involvement. So we have here, we have parents, we have a whole school approach as well as a community situation. So we have, um, we have three different levels involving parents. Um, many a times parents are unaware that bullying occurs. So providing educational strategies that allow for parent-child conversations in which parents can reinforce that positive behavior. Uh, the whole school approach is training teachers and administrators to model and reinforce positive behavior against uh, bullying and provide anti-bullying anti messages, as well as the same can hold truth for your after-school programs. You're providing this caring and safe environment uh, that should be very adamant about stopping bullying. So here's how some of the things that I want to talk about fears and feelings related to about being bullied. Quite oftentimes a child may feel helpless. They may they may they may fear backlash from the kid who bullied them. Bullying can be a humiliating experiences which leads leads them feeling socially isolated as well as they may feel rejection from their peers. So again, parents, school staff, and other caring adults have a great role to play in preventing bullying. They can start that by helping kids understanding what bullying is, talk about uh, how to stand up to it safely, tell kids bullying isn't acceptable, make sure that kids know how to get help, and they need to also keep the lines of communication open. Check in with kids often, listen to them, Know who their friends are, ask about school, and understand their concerns. Um, some of the statistics for in 2018 show that adults were notified in less than half, so like 41% of the times of bullying incidents, adults were not uh, informed of what was going, op going on. So having that open dialogue with children is a great first step in preventing and also providing opportunities for recovery from bullying. So when we talk about supporting kids who are bullied, here are some of the mistakes, and we've kinda, we have kind of we may have talked about these. Never tell the child to ignore the bullying. Do not blame the child for being bullied. It's not their fault, even if they may have provoked it. Do not tell the child to physically fight back against the child who is bullying. It could get the child hurt, suspended, or expelled. I understand that many of us may believe that you have to stand up for yourself and there are ways to do that without necessarily being violent uh, in retaliation because it, it can't have negative results for that child. And parents should resist the urge to contact the other parents involved. It may make the matters worse. School or other officials should act as mediators between parents. And again, follow up. Show the commitment to really making bullying stop. Because bullying is a behavior that repeats itself and can be repeated, it takes a constant effort to uh, to make sure that it can't that it does stop. Here we have uh, some more issues addressing. So involve the kids who are bullied in making amends, uh, especially those teachers and administrators who serve as mediators. It can be their actions to to help see help the youth who is who is bullying others understand how their actions affect others. They can do this by writing letters, doing good deeds and for the person, 
clean up, repair, or pay for damages. Um, we also here have the zero, to the zero, I mean the, uh, the strategies, and I talked about the zero tolerance or three strikes. Um, suspending or expelling students who bully does not really reduce the behavior. Teachers may be less likely to revolt, report bullying if suspension or expulsion is the consequence. Uh, generally, conflict resolution and peer mediation doesn't result doesn't work. Bullying is not a conflict between people of equal power. Remember, I said it's a, an issue of a power imbalance. So therefore, conflict resolution can't really work that way. And group treatment doesn't work either. Group members tend to reinforce bullying behavior in others. So follow up after the bullying issue is resolved. Continue finding ways to help the child who bullied to understand how they, how what they did affected others. Praise acts of kindness and talk about what it means to be a good friend. So now that we are on module number 10, here is the practicum for this week. Uh, I want you to watch the video of the link provided below and write a two-page reflection. Again, APA format, uh, double-spaced, a 12-point 12, 12 font. And I want you to include five facts that, are, that you found from the video and discuss them. Don't just list the five facts. I want you to discuss the five facts that you got. All right, so EOEM 10, here we go. This is gonna be part of your standard operating procedures manual. So what I want you to do is determine and describe strategies that you will use to train your staff as it relates to the topic of bullying. So this is gonna be a written project and I want you to uh, frame it in the way that it's a training session that you could use for your uh, standard operating procedure manual. So the topics should include, but are not limited to expectations, policies, and procedures that your program will follow to prevent or address bullying as it relates to your camp. And I hope this is clear, but I want you to remember, you are not the person handling the bullying. You are training your staff to do that. So how do you train your staff to handle that situation correctly? That's what I want you to focus on. And so here is some examples that I have for during training session, you can read these four situations. Uh, I know some of you will try to use these as well, but I want you to use more than just these four. I want you to talk about a full training session and what you would do. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks and see you next time.